There we go. <laughs> it's fixing the camera, just making sure everything is fine. Hey, this is H1. We're going to be running it back with another episode talking about chess knowledge, chess wisdom, and chess understanding again. And today we're going to be going over this game of the Tata Steel Masters Chess Tournament. And this round has been quite boring, but, you know, it is what it is. What round was this? This was the 11th round in the Tata Steel, Tata Steel Masters Chess Tournament. And the white pieces was, his name is Prague. We're just going to call him that for short. His rating is 2684. And then the black pieces, his name is Perham. And his rating is 2790. Let's get into it. Are we, are we here? Are we live? We should be good now. Okay, making sure everything is good on my computer. We got likes in here. Who who's in here? We got chess walk. We got yo. We got uh Nova Waffle. All right, cool. Let's get started. Let's get started in this game. Okay. So the first moves that was played in this game, and we're going to be playing the black side here. So we're going into a Sicilian defense. E4, C5 initiates the Sicilian. After the move C5, knight to F3, then we have the move D6. After doing the move D6, that goes into, uh, what, what opening? It usually goes into the, yeah, it's the minor variation. So after the move D6, D4, usually black does C takes on D4, and knight takes on D4. After knight takes on d4 in this position, we have the move knight to f6 by the opponent. And where's my stick at? There's my stick. So after the move knight to f6, this knight is attacking the e4 pawn. And usually in this position, white defends the pawn with the move knight to c3, which was played next. And where are the black pieces in this game? Just to give a reminder. Okay. Let's get into it. Let's get started. So after the move knight to c6, a knight to c3, then we have the move a6. After a6, usually this move is played to stop the pieces from going to the b5 square with the knight on c3 or with the knight on d4. And this bishop cannot check on the b5 square too. And that is a really important move to play in the Sicilian. Now you might be thinking, isn't that ruining like the chess principles of the Sicilian? But you just have to know your opening theory because this move is actually really important and tactics can happen on this b5 square very quickly and then plus two now black can do b5 to get a lot more space on the queen side in these type of positions and so that's why the move a6 is really important and Prague did next let me just move this board a little bit Prague did next to move h3 which isn't the main line and this is where we're going to be getting into a totally different position in this type of game. So after the move a3, we got the move e5 and then knight f3 by our opponent. After knight to f3, hey, is there like hair on my arm? <laughs> after the move knight to f3, queen c7 attacking the c3 knight or putting pressure on the c3 knight, we have the move by our opponent knight to h2. And this is where, and this is where it gets kind of weird. And then black is going to have to pretty much think about what's going on in this position, because I think this was only played. I mean, I mean, actually, this wasn't played at all because this move is actually a novelty in this opening. I don't see any massive games on the leechess.org database here. And all the people who was here, hey, you can ask any questions and you can figure out the best moves for the black pieces. Don't be afraid to chat because I'm going to be looking at the chat right now. And actually, just make it sure that it's working. Give me a thumbs up. But anyway, after the move knight to h2, then we have the move by black, knight b to d7, and then knight to g4. And now the plan by Prague, just to get a totally different position in this game, which could work against masters or, um, or grandmasters too. So you can just tell that Prague was actually going for the throat in this type of position, and he was trying to annihilate his opponent that was higher rated than him. And I like that type of chess. That's the fighting spirit right there. Hey, checkmate, how you doing? Hey, Kuboton. Hey, man. Oh, crap. Let me turn that sound down on my Discord, which my Discord is down below in the description. If you want to join a group of people, it's over 1,500 members. You can connect with other people, and you can improve your chess in that Discord with like-minded people. 
But let's get through this game right quick. This is from the Tata Steel Masters Chess Tournament. Hey, Lu Luan, how you doing? Okay, cool. So after the move knight to g4, then what do you think black's next move is in this position? What do y'all think black's next move is? What would y'all say? Because in this position, we got the move knight to g4, which is putting pressure on our knight on f6. Do we do anything about this or do we do another move in this type of position? What do y'all think? And if you're trying to improve during this chess lesson, I would suggest to comment your best move. I don't care what rating you're at. I don't care if you're at a 50 ELO, right? As long as you're thinking critically, you're gonna be way better. And I would actually suggest you play a game after this lesson and then just um, see how good you are after we do this live chess lesson. Let's get started into it. What is the best move by Black? What do you think? What do you think is the next move here? Okay, so we got one suggestion, bishop to e7, which I'm thinking bishop to e7 is just fine here. You can play bishop to e7. Yeah, bishop to e7 is just fine. Perham went a different route, though. What's another move that you think that he could do here? What's another move? We got eight people viewing right now. Make sure that you like the video, especially if you like my shorts. You've probably seen my shorts more than my live streams or my uh, original videos. Okay, what do y'all think is the next move here? And this is a chess lesson for y'all. What do y'all think is the next move by black? And bishop e7 is actually a good decision because you're developing pieces and that's what you're supposed to do in the opening, in the opening phase of the game. But let me just give you a hint. Black decided to expand in space. How do we expand in space? What move would you say here? How do you think black expanded in space in this type of position? Because we're playing the black pieces because black wins in this position and our opponent is the white pieces. I'm looking at the chat right now. What do y'all think here? All right. I'm going to give y'all one minute. I'm going to give y'all one minute. I'm not sure. Just say a move. It doesn't matter if you're not sure. You can still say moves. I'm going to give y'all one minute. This is my, I got this sand timer. It's a one minute sand timer, and I'm gonna put y'all on one minute. <laughs> Pawn to d5 to expand in space. Yeah, so pawn to d5 is one of the good options. Well, it can the pawn could just be taken in this position, but I'm glad you're heading the right direction here. What if I told you that the next move is actually one of the pawn moves? That's probably a good hint for everybody. The next move is one of the pawn moves. And I'll be shouting you out if you get the correct move. You mentioned pawn to b. Yeah, Luan, um, Luan, you are correct. The next move that was played here by Black was actually b5. After the move b5 in this position, we have knight to e3. And I'm guessing that white is trying to take care of that weakness on the d5 square. And usually white's plan in this type of position is to trade all the pieces and make sure that this d6 pawn stays a backwards pawn. And backwards pawns are trouble but in this position, black gets a lot of activity, especially usually the pawn break of f5. Not now exactly, but then bishop b7 attacking the e4 pawn. There's a lot of activity ideas that black can do in this type of position. And we got this extra square knight to c5. So after knight to e3, black did the move knight to b6, probably trying to head to c4, and white did a3. After a3 in this position, and we're almost to the critical one, after a3, bishop to e7, bishop to d3, and then we got to move bishop to e6 because we're supposed to be developing pieces in the opening. This is what you're supposed to do, and this is what all grandmasters do. Most beginners have trouble with developing pieces, but I'm going to tell you right now, activity is king, especially when you get into trouble. You never know what tactics is going to fly everywhere, and with all your pieces developed that could give you more options to win the game to win the position i mean to get into a winning position after the move bishop to e6 we have queen to f3 queen f3 g6 after g6 we have castle king side by the white pieces and after castle king side we have the move knight to d7 knight to d7 bishop to d2 and then 
you already know that we're going to be transitioning into the middle game, especially with this move knight f to d7. And what do you think black played next here? What do y'all think black played next here in this position? Hey, Morningstar. How you doing, man? Yep, I'm doing a lesson and I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be playing viewers again after like, I think at like 12 o'clock. That's when I planned it. Hey, the H1 is here. Yep. Hey there, H1. Okay, that's what you meant. What is the best move by Black in this position here? Let's get some engagement going. What do y'all think? And that is the title of the video. That is the title of the live stream. This is for y'all. This is free content, free value. And this is how you're going to get better, especially in chess. Now, most of you is probably watching for entertainment, which I get that. That's fine, too. But I know most of you want to beat your opponent when you're playing online, when you're playing on chess.com or leechess.org and you're just like, come on, man, let me get to 1000 rating or let me get to 1200 rating. This finding the best moves of Grandmaster games is the best way to get to that goal. Knight to c5, I'm assuming move the knight to d7, supported the move to c5. Very good to learn the purpose of the moves here. That is exactly right. We move the knight to d7 to go to knight to c5. Hey, good job, uh, Nova, Nova Waffle. So after the move knight to c5, we got the move bishop to e2. And after bishop to e2 in this position, we have castle kingside by the black pieces. And now all the pieces are developed. And this is when it's time to think about ideas. You should always know when you're transitioning into the middle game because it's different principles from in the opening. And this is where people get stuck. Like, what should be my plan? What should I be doing next? And I can just tell you, you should probably be moving your pieces on the right squares where, they, where they're doing their best job. And then plus two, looking at the pawns because sometimes the pawn can tell, the, the structure of the pawns can tell the future of the position. And once you learn pawn breaks, these type of positions become really easy. So after Castle Kingside by the black pieces, White tries to go after us, his opponent, with the move knight to f5. After doing the move knight to f5, what would you do next here? What would I do next here after knight to f5? Would you take the knight with the pawn or would you do another move? What would y'all do here in this position? You're the black pieces in this position. What would you do here? And make sure that you leave a like and a share. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. What would y'all do here if y'all was the black pieces? Would you take the knight with the pawn or would you take with your bishop? Which move do y'all think was played in this position? Which move do y'all think is played in this position? Let's keep it simple. If you take the if you take the pawn, the king's line is the king line is open is opening. Yeah. So if you take with the pawn, yeah, definitely the G file is open, right? So you would have to contend with that. So would y'all take with the bishop on F5 or the pawn? Which option would you say here? First assisting is bishop D8. Honestly. Oh, yeah. So you're trying to just do bishop D8. All right. Is that the only choice? Is that the only decision? What if I did a poll? Can I do a poll right quick? Would everybody answer a poll? Bishop, Bob the Astronaut. I think I remember you from last time, Bob the Astronaut. I think I remember you from last time. Uh, let me just do a poll right quick. Let me see which piece that everybody would take here. Which piece would you take? with I'm doing the poll <laughs> bishop or pawn ask the community okay I just did a poll what are y'all gonna pick <laughs> so bishop there's like was there just like one bishop just bishop there's a lot of bishop Five votes, bishop, bishop, bishop. Okay. 
And that is actually what happened in the game. So he decided to take with the bishop because he wanted to avoid all the comp. So g takes on f5 can be played here, but there is a lot of complications that can happen. For instance, if f takes on, um, if g takes on f5 and then e takes on f5, you could do one small mistake. Like, for example, the follow up for black is to do the move king h8. But if they mess up one move by doing the move bishop d7, then f6 is demolishing the black side. Black is already busted in this type of position here. So I'm guessing that the grandmaster just decided to take with the bishop just to get out of all the complications. And that's why he chose bishop takes on f5. Even though a computer would be brave enough or Magnus Carlsen would have been brave enough to take the knight with the pawn. So after bishop takes on f5, pawn takes on f5, then we have the move, let me check here. Then we have the move d5. And that was the plan by black. Now we're controlling the center in this position. Now we're controlling the center. And then white decided to do the move, bishop to h6, attacking the rook. Then we have rook to d8. Which side would y'all rather play here? Would y'all rather play the white side or the black side? Hey, chess walk, how you doing? Would y'all rather play the white side or the black side in this position? I'm gonna end the poll. We're gonna do another one. Which side would you rather play? Honestly, today my brain is not working because today I got sports day in my school. It's no worries, no problem. I understand. Which side would you rather play? Doing another poll. The white side or, uh, or the black? White side or black side? Give me your answer. Which side? Make me understand your ways while I drink my coffee. A lot of people saying the white side here. Yeah, this is an interesting position. And we got 16 of you here right now. So let's get started. Black side is looking better because it has more space and can attack more. Yeah, exactly. That is true. Black side is better because of the two center pawns that are quite advanced and can threaten white's pieces. That is exactly right. So these two pawns are really powerful. And that's why I would pick the black side rather than picking the white side. But this isn't over yet. Now, the, there are open lines on the D file and the E file. So you still have to be cautious not to make a mistake and you have to be precise and efficient with your play. Technically, these are almost hanging pawns, but since the F pawn is right here, they're not technically hanging pawns yet. Let's get, let's get more into the position right quick. After the move rook F to D8, then we have to move rook A to D1. And then what would y'all play next here after rook A to D1? We got 16 people here. Let's figure out the best move. What would y'all play next? What do y'all think the Grandmaster played next here in this position? Black looks a bit better. Have uh, better here. But that bishop on eight, but that bishop on e6 is annoying. H6. <laughs> Meme 63 is in here. What's up, Meme 63? Always trolling. I see you. You're doing good. I'm not ever gonna say your comment because you're always trolling. Pawn to d4 to kick the knight away. Uh, Mr. Morningstar, GM is which side? We're playing the black side in this position and we're going against the white side. And just to tell everybody the names of the players who are um, the players who are in this game, the white side is Prague and it's like his nickname and his rating is 2684. And the black side, which that's the side that we're on is Perham. And this was played in the Tata Steel Masters chess tournament. Let's get to it. D4 looks good. D4 looks good. All right, everybody's saying D4, but what if I told you that he decided to attack the queen? What if I told you that he decided to attack the queen? D4, F6. And actually attacking the queen is a much better move here. Just a, just a smidge of better. Black isn't overwhelmingly winning in this position yet. The, even the computer is only giving them like 0.7. Q 
knight d4? Knight d4, it, well, the knight can't even go to d4. What do you mean? <laughs> e5 is also a good move here. I'm thinking that you meant e4, but yeah, e4, attacking the queen, just progressing with those pawns. So after the move e4 in this position, they move the queen to g4, and then now black decided to do the move knight to a4, attacking the b2 pawn, and put a pressure on that c3 knight. And if white doesn't do anything, knight takes on c3 and capture back with um, capture back with the b pawn. Queen takes on c3 is a threat here. So after the move, knight takes on a4. Knight takes on a4, still putting pressure on that b2 pawn. Then we have by our opponent, f takes on g6. After f takes on g6, which pawn are we taking? Which pawn are we taking with the F pawn or the H pawn? What principle are we going to acknowledge while deciding which pawn to take the G6 pawn with? Are we, are we taking back with the F pawn or the H pawn? What would y'all do here? Queen G3, hey man, is that CAC? <laughs> uh, Luan, you are correct because you should always capture near the center. I mean, usually capture near the center. Don't ca don't capture near the center if there's like a checkmate in one. You know what I mean? But you should usually capture near the center if you have that possibility. So after H takes on G6, then we got a really ugly move by our opponent. And I'm going to depend on y'all to figure out the opportunities um, that Black is going to have to do. I mean, figure out the opportunities to take in Black's position. F4 was played. After the move F4, this should ring some alarms. There's a lot of threats here, and I need y'all to figure out the weaknesses of White's camp. The thing about moving pawns is it opens up weaknesses. So moving this F F4 pawn not only makes E4, the E4 pawn, a pass pawn, but now there's weaknesses that was created, like the E3 square and the G3 square, things of that nature. Things to think about when you're playing chess. What are we doing next here? And I'm glad that somebody noticed. Who said that? Who said that? Um, CAC? Yeah. There's a weak diagonal on this A7 to G1 diagonal. That is super weak because of the move F4 now. What are we doing next here? What would y'all do? Ampassant? Well, we, he didn't decide to do Ampassant in this position. Remember, the threat is better than the execution. So even though we have the possibility to do en passant, isn't keeping the pass pawn a better than just doing en passant? Because if we did en passant, that would give us an isolated D pawn, and I don't know how long we're gonna keep that pawn. I don't know. Queen C5, G Phil is saying Queen G5, I mean Queen C5. So you're on the right direction. The Grandmaster actually did a similar move, but I'm pretty sure that might still work too. Queen c5, bishop c5, queen to b6 to attack and also defend g6. Um, Nova Waffle, you are correct. He did the move queen to b6, attacking the king on g2. <laughs> My voice fainted. Attacking the king on g2. And then after doing the move, queen to b6, king h1. And what do y'all think was played next here? And this is the big problem with Black's, uh, this is the big problem with White's position here. And you're going to realize why we did the move Queen B6 instead of Queen C5. And it's kind of creative. Because you're attacking and defending at the same time, like somebody said. Better boot up Stockfish. <laughs> no, don't boot up Stockfish. If you're viewing this right now, that is a bad idea. And make sure that you like the video. This is free chess content. Chess walk, you are correct. Doing the powerful move F5 was the plan. Because once you realize, okay, doing the move queen B6, you're protecting on the sixth rank this G6 pawn. And now you can do F5 without queen takes on G6. And then plus in this position, you have a protected pass pawn, which protected pass pawns are really important when you're playing chess and especially in an end game. And that pretty much solidifies that if you trade all the pieces, if you're the black pieces and you trade all the pieces with your opponent, you're, you're dang near winning.
And so after doing the move f5 in this position, we have queen g3 by our opponent. After queen g3, now you're just going to have to convert this into a win. What would be your next move in this position? You snack him and knock him out, wait for his time to run out. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do in chess. You didn't know it was brutal like that. Maybe in chess boxing, but, but not in this game. These are regular people, you know, they don't be practicing like that. Imagine like you just start punching out of nowhere and then he's like, huh, huh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just turn to like a Jackie Chan movie. That'd be crazy. That'd be sick, though. Y'all would be applauding. Y'all would be cheering if that happened. If it was like Jet Li versus Jackie Chan out of nowhere, they just <laughs> when chess has the black Air Force energy. I know, right? <laughs> Mate, wait a minute. Chess walk, you are correct. Nova waffle, you are correct. That pawn is just free. Knight takes on B2. Now the whole position is just um, turning up in smoke. White just lost a pawn with no compensation. And this is always a bad position to be in. So after knight takes on b2, we have to move rook to b1, attacking a knight. And what would y'all do next here after rook to b1? Hey, Evan, how you doing? Let's get the best moves in this position, all right? Everybody that is here right now. What is the best move for black to do? Just takes, 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 here, 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 there, there, there. Yeah, pretty much. Especially in bullet, you can probably win this pretty quickly, huh? Uh, G field, that is the move that was played here. Knight to C4. After knight to C4 in this position, we have, by the white pieces, A4 attacking the pin piece. And we definitely cannot take A4 because if we did, Rook takes on b6 would be a disaster of a move in this position. So black in this position did a safe move, king to h7, attacking the bishop on h6. So after king h7, bishop takes on c4, what would you do here? What would be your next move in this position? How would you win against the grandmaster? What would be it? Knight to c4. Yeah, knight to c4 was correct. Knight to c4 was correct. What would you play here after bishop takes on c4? Would you just recapture back with the d-pawn or would you do something else in this position? I'm curious. And meme 63, no, you don't just start whacking on a guy. <laughs> We're not doing, <laughs> dude, that would be crazy if he like pulled out a sword out of nowhere. <laughs> on guard. <laughs> I want to see some chess like that for real, for real. <laughs> just take with the just take with the D pawn, capture with king. Uh, who was that? Luthfi? You are correct. Just cap. So he did the move. King takes on H. Man, get out the way, board. <laughs> he did the move. King takes on H6 first. After king takes on H6, then we have the move. Bishop B3 by our opponent and. After bishop b3, rook a to c8, a takes on b5, and then after a takes on b5, we have the move a takes on b5. Would y'all be able to win this position if y'all was the black pieces? This position empathizes the use of capture sequences since white's bishop on c4 is still under attack. Exactly. And the most important thing that you need to look at is all of your force and moves. Don't just automatically capture a piece. And what do I mean by forcing moves? Well, I mean these three things, checks, captures, and threats. And I put this in this order for a reason, because checks is most important, captures is second most important, and then threats is last. Because with the check, your opponent has to respond to it. With the capture, your opponent kind of doesn't have to respond to it, but kind of does since they might be losing the game. And then threats, usually your opponent has to respond. Like that's the least important though. All right. No, I would have a minute left and get flagged. <laughs> Let's continue on with this game because this was pretty creative of how Black kind of consolidated this position because he used the tactic on simplification. After White's move, Rook F to D1, then we have the move D4, pretty much 
showing showing white that he has that extra pawn and he isn't afraid to push it down the board and that's what happens in most end games is that whoever promotes first wins the game now queen f2 was played here so you cannot play d3 in this position because after d3 this would be a sad fate if queen takes on b6 happens so that d pawn is pinned on that diagonal after queen to f2 what do y'all think was played next here i'm going to give y'all the floor what do y'all think was played next here in this position? I'm going to give y'all a chance. I'm going to give y'all one minute. I got this timer. I want to use it as much as possible. I'm going to give y'all one minute to, to figure out what was played here next. Hey, man, I love your chess lesson. Uh, keep up the great work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, what is that, Cameron? I think your name is Cameron. The E pawn is a pass pawn, and I'll try to push these two center pawns. Exactly. That's what you should be doing. So a lot of people saying E3, E3, sneaking sneaking fit what <laughs> what is wrong with you meme 63 that has nothing to do with the chess lesson the last conversation was good because i would enjoy some you know what i mean but i don't i don't know what you're talking about anymore what are we doing in this position cameron yep make sure that you like the video because now our opponent is trying to like close in on the white pieces especially with this next move you got like 10 more seconds to figure out the next move it's not E3. Thank you for inspiring me to get back into chess. Man, thank you for watching the chess lessons because I love teaching. And without me teaching, I'll be like sad all the time. I've always had to come back to chess lessons to teach because I just felt like I was missing out on something. Bishop C5, G4, Noah Waffle, you are actually correct. He played the move Rook to C3. Pretty much putting white into a position Eventually, they're going to be in Zigzwang because all the squares that <laughs> that they had at first is pretty much gone. And this bishop is the only active piece on the white side here. And once you realize that, it's pretty much done. So after the move rook to c3, rook a1, then black does the move queen to f6. What is queen f6 preparing for? Well, now this queen is off this diagonal and maybe this d pawn can be pushed. And actually, if d3 is pushed here, if black had a second move, c can't even capture the three, d3 pawn because rook would capture on b3. So that is the major threat. After queen f6, rook to a7 because white has to do something, right? Then we got the move queen to h4 simplifying the position if queen captures this is clearly lost for the white pieces so after queen h4 queen f1 happens because you know he knows better and after queen f1 what would y'all do next here in this position and this is almost done this is almost just a loss and the opponent is going to resign in uh, a few moves here not a few moves probably several more moves I lied a little bit. It's a white lie. It's small. Bro, I said rook c3. Morning star. Oh, did you say rook c3? My bad, morning star. My bad. Hey, congrats to you too. Don't, don't, don't make it personal, all right? I'm just, I'm just a guy that streams on the internet. <laughs> G Fuel, you are correct. Now, the move that I was talking about, D3 can be played. And what happens after that major move? Well, white's position is pretty much busted. After D3, white is going to have to come up with something creative. So they do the move G3, attacking the queen. And what would y'all do next to just solidify your advantage in this position? And all the people who just joined right now, this is from the Tata Steel Masters Chess Tournament. And we are the black pieces and our opponent is the white pieces. And this last round was pretty... It was pretty boring. There was a lot of draws in the position. There are some uh, important games that had to... I, I felt like in this round, there were some important games that had to be more decisive, but I guess everybody just took a rest day today. That's pretty much what happened. After g3, what are we doing next? Queen takes on h3? Well, if queen takes on h3, remember this queen on f1 is defending that pawn on h3. We can't do that one. I'm from Tata Steel Chess Country. Hey, chess walk! Have you been watching the tournament personally then? I would love to be in the tournament hall actually watching the tournament. Queen takes on G3, Wrath, okay, Luan, Hayden. So all of you wanna do Queen takes on G3. What if I told you there's even a, 
there's a more crazy move in this position than queen takes on g3. And this crazy move pretty much simplified this game for the black pieces. This simple move simplified the game for the black pieces here. Uh, I think your name is Luthfi. Luthfi, purple bam, you are correct. We got the move. D takes on C2. After D takes on C2, you should already see this. Um, you should already see this coming. I mean, there's pawn takes on D1, trying to promote to a queen. Even though G3 is attacking the queen, it really doesn't matter if pawn can take the rook and promote to another queen. And this is pretty much lost. White just does the move rook takes on D8, which is the worst move of them all because of what? What would black do in this position? What should black do in this position? Can I join your class? Yeah, this is the class right now. You pronounced my name wrong. Did I? I thought it was Luthfi. It's not, pronounce your name in the chat. I'm gonna be looking for the comment. Hello, sir. I'm a new player from Indonesia. Welcome to Indonesia. <laughs> C1, Rook. We're not promoted to a Rook, but that is the best move. That should have been played in this position. Actually, pawn to C1, promoted to a Queen, not a Rook. But I guess he thought that it would be simpler if he just took the Rook on D8, which is still winning, but... I wish he would have found the move, just promote to a queen. And then after bishop takes on d8, we got the move g takes on h4. And after g takes on h4 in this position, what would y'all do next? What would y'all do next after g takes on h4? Hey, Skypress. How you doing? You're pretty late, but it's okay. It's fine. You shouldn't be late, though, to the h1 class. Be on time next time. <laughs> okay, so after F3, C, uh, Hayden, you are correct. Just promote to a queen. So promote that pawn to a queen. And then after promoting that pawn, we got queen takes on C1. Rook takes on C1. Checking the king on H1. So white is going to have to respond to that. And then we got the move king to G2. After king to G2, bishop takes on H4. This position is still winning. He could have had a bigger win. I guess how you could describe it. He could have just had a straight blowout. But this is still winning because um, black is still up two pawns. And he can promote those two pawns. And this is still a, a protected pass pawn on E4. After the move rook to a5, wait a minute, rook to a6 in this position by your opponent, what would y'all do next here? After rook to a6, what would y'all do next here? Let me tell a fact about Tata, a company, it donates 99% of its income in charity. If it doesn't donate, then the company has more worth than $200 billion. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, that's an interesting fact. Rook c3. Yeah, that is actually the move that was played here. Wrath, you are correct. After the move, rook to c3, attacking the bishop and threatening rook g3 check, potentially. Then we have the move bishop to e6. And after rook to c2, checking the king on g2, then we have the move king to h1. After king to h1, and we're gonna just see some maneuvering of the pieces here. We got bishop to f6, and then next we have bishop to d7. And after bishop to d7, we have the move king to g7 because in the end game you want you you want to get your king active to promote the pawns that you have here. After king to g7, bishop takes on b5, and after bishop takes on b5 here in this position, we have what? What other move do we have here? Because we just lost a pawn. Or did we? <laughs> I don't know. Hello, everyone. Hey, Buffalo, how you doing? We got the whole crew in here now. I was waiting for Buffalo. Luthfi, you are correct, even though I'm not saying your name right. You are correct, though. We have to move next, rook to f2, attacking the f4 pawn. After rook to f2, we have... Rook to a7, 
and then king to h6. After king to h6, rook goes back to a6, and then we have the move what? Actually, I'm not going to let y'all figure that out. This bishop was being attacked, so we moved the bishop to d4. After bishop to d4, these are just meaningless moves. White already knows that this is a... This is just losing, and that's why he decided to make his own threats here, bishop to e8. And what would y'all play next after bishop to e8? What would y'all play next here after bishop to e8? Because you can't make a mistake. This could quickly turn into a drawn position, or even a loss. What are you... Okay, e A G fuel, you are correct. You got the move E3. Dang, that was quick. After the move E3, because you just have to figure out, hey, we're going to have to push our past pawn. And now this pawn could go to E2 and E1 without being disturbed by this king, since this bishop is going to be protecting this rook on F2. So king G1 wouldn't even be a threat on this rook on F2, which is pretty smart. After the move E3, white's only ditch effort is rook takes on g6 after rook takes on g6 what would be our next move here after rook takes on g6 what would be our next move here and this game is almost to an end where would y'all move the king there's two squares to move the king wrath you are correct king h7 is the best move because if king moves to h5 this would be kind of a weird position because this just give white unnecessary advantage I mean, do you want to give white moves like rook to d6, checking the king, and attacking the bishop on d4? That would be kind of crazy. So that's why we would move the king to h7. After king to h7 in this position, we have rook to g1. After rook to g1, what would y'all play next? After rook to g1, what would y'all play next? We got McBeaver. <laughs> Everybody said king h7. <laughs> yes there we go we push up the past pawn that we have so we're going to do the move e2 and after bishop to b5 which is like the last kind of big blunder that white could have done here what would y'all do next here how would you simplify the position and this last move made the opponent resign so if you get this last move hey you're pretty good you're commended by h1 Rook F1. A lot of people saying Rook F1. But I'm guessing that Rook F1 might actually... Well, after Rook F1, Rook takes on F1, E takes on F1, Bishop takes on F1, and why would it be winning? Nope, why would it be winning? That would just be a draw. Never mind. Yeah, that would just be a draw. So, so Jal, 999... Nine nine. <laughs> you remember that TV show? Yeah, a lot of people said it, but the last move that made the opponent resign was rook to h2. Was rook to h2. Do y'all know the sequence here? After rook to h2, white did resign, but he resigned because after king takes on h2, what would be the next move? Let's finish off the sequence. Let's realize why he resigned. Yeah, he sacrificed the rook. Because it simplifies the position to pretty much a winning endgame. Yep, Luth, you're correct. Bishop takes on g1. And after bishop takes on g1, we can promote the pawn without any without anything to stop us from with the e1 square. All right, cool. That was a good game by the black pieces. And hey, y'all did a good job in the chat. Y'all can commend yourselves. Give a shout out. Make sure that you like the video. This was a good lesson from the Tata Steel Chess um, Masters Chess Tournament. This was good. Good game. Cool, sir. Yeah. Uh, chess Walker, you have a question? Hooray. <laughs> What's the question? Why not bishop takes on g6 instead of rook? Um, rook takes on g6? When was that? Oh, you talk about white doing the move instead of uh, rook takes on g6, bishop takes on g6. That would have been, actually, let me check that out. That would have been probably a better decision, right? A little bit. 
I'm guessing after bishop takes on g6, if you can remember the board, um, black would still have the move e2. So there wouldn't even be any um, discovered attacks in that position to stop black's pawn from promoting to the e1 square. Unless y'all really want to go back to that position. My laptop is at 1% right now. <laughs> All right, cool. So this was a good stream. And if you want to come back to the stream where I'm going to be playing bullet chess against everybody, come back at like... 12 o'clock at 12 a.m. Central Time, and I'm going to be playing all my viewers in bullet chess for like probably two hours or one hour. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel, but it is what it is. Yeah, pretty much. The, I mean, it'll be the next day for me. I don't know what time period that everybody's in right now. This is cool. <laughs> I'll be asleep. Well, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. I'm trying to reach a certain goal on YouTube, and I'm glad I could do these live streams. And this actual this live stream actually went pretty well um, tonight. It went pretty well. I'm glad I was able to do this game. But anyway, have a good day, and make sure that you fight to the end and stay focused in chess and in real life. Okay, peace. Thank you, Nova. Yeah, we hit 30k.